Welcome back to the Chad AC Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. KFYO. Joining me in studio, we continue our uh, our look back at the legislative session and also kind of previewing what's to come because uh, the job's never done uh, for our uh, lawmakers. And joining us uh, in studio right now, uh, State Representative John Frulo. Representative Frulo, bring that mic just a little bit lower. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm well, Chad, and thank you for the invitation to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Always good to have you and, and, and have any of our lawmakers uh, here on the program. Uh, I, I guess we'll start off uh, with, with just kind of a, a look back at, at this uh, session. Uh, how did you think the, the session went? How did things go this year? I, th- I think it went quite well. You know, it's kind of interesting. Every, you've been doing this long enough. Every session is different. Every session is unique. It's a little bit like kids. Um, I think that uh, th- they all have their pluses, and, of course, it's they all have their minuses. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, I think we got together. We worked together. We worked uh, well in the House together. We worked uh, with the Senate. Uh, of course, great delegation here. Chairman Burroughs, Chairman Perry, uh, you know, in the whole area, the West Texas area, we were able to get together and accomplish a lot of things for this part of the state. Of course, Lubbock in particular. And then, uh, uh, you know, Texas Tech had huge wins all, the, you know, across the field, not only in athletics. Athletics that uh, we were, um, you know, real happy and excited with, but um, uh, just out uh, in the legislative process, and and so a lot, a lot of good things happen. Working together, uh, working for a. a uh, I guess common goals is what a lot of us did. Uh, we we tend to get together early, work, figure out our plan, and then we get it done. And uh, so I think I think overall we had a great session. How were how was the relationship between the House and the Senate this in this past session compared to previous sessions? This session it, it was I think a lot it was a lot better. We uh, uh, I think we concentrated on things that we agreed on. We concentrated on things that the state. Uh, thought was important, uh, you know, of course, working with the governor, uh, you know, the big three, the Senate, uh, the, the lieutenant governor who presides over the Senate, the speaker who presides over the House and the governor. Uh, they had a, a, a great relationship. They all worked together. And, uh, you know, I, th- I think we were able to accomplish a lot. Of course, we also had more money this time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, like any business, any uh, operation, uh, when times are tough, you tend to spend spend a little bit, you cut back. Uh, when times are a little better, you can go back and fix some of the things that you deferred. You, you know, you can catch up on stuff. And so this session, we, we did a lot of good things. What do you think was, you know, the one, two, or, you know, three, however many you want to point out, what were the, the big things that were done, the big wins in this session? Well, I think first off, just going into the session, um, dollar-wise, it wasn't that big of an issue. Uh, it was $17.4 million out of a two, over $250 billion dollar budget but you know and you know exactly what i'm talking about the vet school yeah. uh we know what happened with uh, chancellor duncan through that process we knew uh what we were up against and being able to get that in the final budget it was in the house budget at the start when that went to the conference committee later on the house and the senate both worked together agreed that it should be in there it went on then there was a discussion on there or in there about having uh, uh, the coordinating board determined whether or not that was something that needed to be done. We were able to get that removed, uh, you know, primarily because legislative intent, when the legislation, when the legislators get together and say, this is what we want and this is what we're funding, you know, we're pulling out the checkbook and saying, this is what we want to do. Uh, you know, we as a body said, we want the vet school. We look at the needs up here. And so being able to get that is really a, um, uh, a qualitative item that we were able to get accomplished. So that was big for not only this area, but for the state of Texas and this whole region. Do, do you think that, that one of the reasons why, you know, it, it got through and the money got through, uh, you know, and, and, and it looks so positive was it you know was it because it was all this a lot of this was done behind the scenes it wasn't played out in front of the media there wasn't this you know media fight necessarily between Texas Tech and Texas A&M and and lawmakers on either side this was kind of done 
Behind closed doors, maybe. Well, I, I don't know that it was done behind closed doors. Uh, again, getting back to uh, Chancellor Duncan, who's you know one of the most respected people in Austin and in the state in this area, and, and what all happened there. I, I don't think you know that that played out in the media. Yeah, it sure did. And uh, you know a lot of different items. It, it's relationships. We have great relationships in this area throughout the state. Uh, it was also a good cause. It was a good need. We uh, you know understand the need for that. That. So there were just a bunch of uh, important things where the stars were lined up, uh, in essence, and it worked. So yeah. I, I think it was outdone in the open. But I think a lot of it has to do with relationships. And that's how a lot of items in uh, Austin get done. It's uh, you, you know people, you respect them, you believe them. And if they say that, they, they understand it. And so we were able to do that. And there were some pretty big odds against that. Uh, talk about the, uh, the the property tax reform. Uh, obviously, that that's going to... Uh, th- that was probably considered one of the big wins uh, along with school finance uh, in this session. Talk about that and how you think all of that played out. Well, you know, I think it was uh, it was definitely a, a rocky road. It was yeah. uh, difficult to get there. At the end of the day, it uh, started chipping away at what many of us feel is just a, a terrible situation. Uh, if you own property, you're being taxed and you're being taxed out of your home. So a lot of folks can no longer, they have their house paid off. Off. They no longer have a mortgage. Uh, between maintaining it and paying the property taxes, they can't even stay in homes that they've been in for a long time. And just uh, uh, another component that's just as bad is that rate at which that property tax was increasing. And so looking at that, there were th- some items put in place that said, you know, you've got to Bring that back. You've got to government. You've got to live within your means, just like we do in our own households, in our own businesses. We just can't keep raising money because we want to spend more. Yeah. And uh, I think that's that's a good thing. It brings it out to the voters. It gives them a chance to say, "Hey, if you're over, you know, you're increasing it too much, then the voters get to decide. Do we really want to spend the money we're giving you that way?" So I, I think it's a great deal. There's also a lot of transparency, disclosures in there. That that uh, weren't available. And I think the uh, neat part about that is it's bringing a spotlight to the individual taxpayer saying, look at this. Not only is your valuation important, but also that rate. You have to look at both of them. And so I I think there's a lot of good things. And more importantly, it sets a path going forward that we can work with. Well, and and I I visited with uh, Senator Charles Perry on the show last week, and, and we talked about the relief portion of this. Sure. And very early on in the session, this was sold as, relief and reform and and you know to his credit chairman burroughs was like eh, this, this is a lot more reform than it is relief on, exactly on this. right um, and and so I, I think that lawmakers were put at a, at a disadvantage you know at the very beginning of the session when this was sold as as you know relief and big relief because when people hear property tax relief they think their bill is going to go down by 500 to a thousand bucks or more that's not going to happen when i was visiting with charles perry on this program last week he he almost gave the indication that you know that that type of relief that everybody is looking for unless we completely redo the system in Texas it's going to be hard to get to that big big savings do you think that's true too do you think that to get to a major major drop in property tax bills it's going to have to, something major has to happen in the state as far as, you know, a different system? It does. If you look at how property taxes work, the first thing that people really like about property taxes is it's stable. That, that amount stays relatively the same. Other than one bill we passed this time or, you know, some bills uh, where we changed the language to say if you're hit by a hurricane or something like that, you can actually get a reduction. So that gives relief to folks who are already, you know, pretty much getting the heck beat out of them. Yeah. But if you look at property taxes and how much that is, it's very difficult. There's a lot of money coming in. And so it's kind of like steering a big ship. You know, first you got to slowly start steering it in the right direction, and then you can make adjustments as you go. Uh, the state needs money. We have to have court systems. We have to have roads. We have to take care of people that can't take care of themselves. We have to educate our kids. You know, three-quarters of our budget is spent on education. That's public school. Um, higher ed, and then, uh, of course, the Medicaid side of items. And then the rest of the state runs on roughly that 25% that's left. So, you know, court systems, roads, everything, you know, game and fish, everything that we do. Um, 
that that gets done there. So it takes money to run this state. And we, you know, one of our jobs that we're tasked with is figure out how to get that money. And at the current rate, it was just too much being borne by taxpayers that own property. And so we have to look at that. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of discussion on sales tax swap. Right. And people were not ready for that. I'm not a fan of that. I didn't like that. Uh, but I, I think it's important to look at what can we do uh, to keep that state and not put an undue burden on just a certain segment. What What about, and we'll get to the break here in just a second, what did you not like about the sales tax swap? Was it just the idea of raising the sales tax or was it you know, when it was brought in and when it was floated? Well, I think part of it is we would have one of the highest sales tax rates in the country. Right. I, I don't like that. And it hurts the state, especially when you're uh, close to a border and doing business. People don't want to buy if they're paying a higher rate. The other thing is I want to make sure that if we're reducing or getting rid of a tax, that we need to do that. Because one thing in government, if you leave, leave just a little nub that somehow grows into a big tree again. And, you know, we saw that in 2000. 2006, yes. when property taxes were reduced, it wasn't much, you know, it wasn't a number, you know, too many years after that, people were writing checks out for the same amount that they were writing it before they had the reduction. And so I think it's important to look at that and see. But, you know, with government, you always float a balloon, in essence. You see what happens. People think about it. They look at it. They, they kind of start getting their arms around it. Um, you know, so we'll see where it goes. I think the, the important thing is we have to look at what we're doing, what are our Options available. What does it take to run the government? You know, just to you know get government to operate, um, and then how do we do that? How do we fund it? Yeah, visiting with uh, State Representative John Frulo. We'll go ahead and take the break. When we come back, I want to talk about some bills that uh, maybe weren't in the spotlight too much that you were happy that they passed, and then also uh, the the redistricting battle is going to be coming up in the next legislative session. We'll get uh, his thoughts on that. Chad HT Show KFYO. We'll be right back. All right, Chad HD Show News Talk KFYO State Representative John Frulo in studio representing District 84. Let's uh, we we've talked about the the big and this was considered the meat and potatoes you know session that 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 you know that that's what it was kind of considered at the very beginning that y'all were going to get to those big big issues. Uh, though there were also a lot of other issues that were passed, a lot of other pieces of legislation that were passed that didn't make the spotlight. Uh, Representative Frulo, what what were some of you know maybe some of the bills that you worked on and some of the other pieces of legislation that maybe weren't in the spotlight that much but you thought were very important? Well, I think there were a number of bills, of course, that were locally that are important to us locally. Uh, I, uh, along with uh, Senator Perry, carried a number of bills for UMC that helped them out as far as them being able to employ police officers, uh, have their own staff there where they can specifically train them for the issues that uh, pop up in an organization like theirs. Uh, was still having the backup of the you know local police department, so it was a, a cost savings situation that uh, also gave them a little bit more control. So we did that. That wasn't real glamorous, uh, but but very important. Uh, we had a uh, employment of physicians that helps people. Uh, one of the bigger bills that did get a lot of notice and something that I've worked on for the last uh, three sessions was the surprise billing where you go to a yeah. doctor and then all of a sudden you get this bill and you're going, oh, my goodness, this is uh, nowhere near what I was, you know, in some cases, even what I was told. And they, well, yeah, well, you were under. We had to change doctors or something like that and go out of network. And so people are getting these surprise bills or balanced billing that was just, you know, in a lot of cases, just devastating them. And uh, uh, so we, we uh, carried that bill that helped, uh, again, the hospital employ uh, uh, those particular physicians that would fall into that. One of the neat things that we did was uh, not this session, but last session, uh, I carried a bill that would enable the, uh, the vet hospital uh, to uh, transfer land for Texas Tech uh, to transfer land so that the federal government could help. And, you know, of course, that was a big win. And it came down to the last minute and it had to do with a old long-term law on the books that uh, made us have to go, Texas Tech, I say us, Texas Tech, go to the legislature and say, we want to change this or we need your permission to sell this land or, you know, whatever, trade this land, yeah. however that 
uh, transpired. And, and so this session I was thinking about, and I said, you know, we need to make it to where we don't have to go because if we have to go to the legislature to do that, the other major university, university systems don't have to go, we could get in trouble. And that thing came down to the end. So I said, let's get rid of that. We don't need it. We have a, you know, a board of regents and we have a, a Texas Tech University system now instead of just, you know, one standalone uh, university. And so we got rid of that. So it's th those little things that aren't real fancy or uh, filled with a lot of excitement that could mean big deals down the road. And so we had that. Some of the fun things I got to work on was uh, e-bikes, where we now have e-bikes, electronic bikes that uh, are uh, designated uh, in, in stat, you know, in state code where we can go out and actually, you know, what kind of bike it is, and it makes it easier to say you can have them here, you can't have them here, and uh, I don't know if you've ever ridden one, but they, they're actually kind of neat. They're yeah. a lot of fun. You start pedaling them, and you take off, and so, uh, you know, that's just something that uh, as we progress as far as different options become available you know, in the state and around the uh, country that we, we keep up with that and are able to uh, manage that. Uh, the barbecue bill, we thought we had put a, uh, you know, steak in that thing and uh, cooked it up <laughs> last session, the 85th session. Of course, now this last one that we just finished was the 86th and uh, the thing uh, reared its ugly head. And of course, uh, you know, few things are as important to Texans as barbecue. Right. And uh, so there was a, a big fight and it was uh, a an interpretation that uh, the Ag Department went one way. Again, the legislature felt that we had put it in place last time. It had to do with the weighing of the meat and uh, the, the cost of retrofitting restaurants. And it just didn't make sense. And so, uh, again, I worked with um, Senator Perry, and uh, we, we got that done and, and clearly said this is what the legislature, you know, and the people of Texas want, yeah. you know, they, they know if they're getting, you know, the barbecue they, they want. And so we ended up, uh, you know, that, that that's kind of some of the fun stuff. Uh, a lot of things for tech worked on and, yeah. uh, uh, you know, we did a reallocation of the funding about 400 million and, uh, tech is a, a big player in that, uh, another area where we had some wins and we had, uh, uh some items that didn't get over the, the threshold and that had to do with, uh, taking AP classes and getting uh, uh, college credits while you're in high school. So, you know, as, as college gets more expensive and you will find out as uh, you start uh, sending kids to college that you want credits that you have paid for or worked on in high school to be able to transfer to what they actually should transfer and what you expected them to transfer for once you get to college. So we're working on that, making sure that there's good understandings between the universities and the high schools and working together so that when you work on something, it helps reduce the amount of time you have to spend in college and, uh, of course, reduce the cost, which is a uh, a big increase. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, neat things. I think uh, one of the things I was a little bit disappointed in, I had a uh, bill that uh, said that if you're a, end up being a terrorist, you go out and buy a life insurance policy that you can't can't keep those funds, you okay. know, and, and there was some of that in the yeah. case that actually happened that a, wow. a, a, a person in Lubbock got a hold of me and said that uh, this is what happened and they were able to, to keep the funds. And it's like, no, I don't think so. Yeah, no, no. And, you know, so it made it through the house, but, uh, you know, it didn't, um, uh, you know, get uh, uh, any daylight in the, the Senate. But, you know, that's still that's something that's one of those common sense things that when people see it, it goes, yeah, that would make me mad. Yeah. Uh, real quickly, coming up in the next legislative session, y'all are going to have some fights on your hands. So it may not be. Really, a, that'll be the first time. Yeah, it may not be a kumbaya session. Redistricting is going to be coming up. How how big is that going to be out here? It, it's going to be huge. Redistricting is something that starts uh, you know, right after the census comes out. So it'll be up next time. And uh, it lasts for 10 years, maybe longer. You know, it, we... Uh, we, we, it seems like we just finally kind of finished up the last uh, yeah. redistricting bout. And, uh, you know, the, the, the sad part about it, there's a few law firms out there that uh, I call boutique law firms. And that's what they do. They make their living. So I don't know how you make your living doing something that happens every 10 years for 10 years. But uh, it, it seems like that they, you know, just keep stirring it up. And, you know, of course, uh, politics, of course, the, the, you know, the big court came out with their ruling uh, the, the other day. So it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. But we'll get through it and we'll uh, do right. That's why it's important to have good folks there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and uh, those who have been there for a while. 
while and uh, and uh, have those uh, connections and those relationships. Representative Frulo, always good to visit with you. Appreciate you stopping by. You bet. Anytime. Thank you.